This is big news when a Federal Reserve Bank is talking about the gold standard, $10,000 gold, $15,000, $20,000 gold. Where can the silver price go? Which Federal Reserve Bank is talking about the gold standard? This is shocking news, but don't worry. We've got more. We're going to talk about some major doom going on in the economy right now. A former Treasury Secretary pointed out something absolutely startling about inflation. And we have big news about the debt level as well. Hey, thank you for being here. This is the big Ron's Basement, Basement Dweller Community Easter weekend live stream. So it's a big deal that you've decided to join me. Thank you for being here. Please give this a thumbs up. You can subscribe to the channel to get a new piece of content every single day about gold and silver. And super chats are never expected, but always super appreciated. Hey, I want to give uh, you a big announcement. Let's start with that, okay? Monday, I've got a big announcement for you regarding what the silver and gold price very likely or possibly could be in one year. Yes, our friend Don Wedding. Now, this guy is super smart, okay? Let me pull up his website for you real quick. You got to check this guy out. And he graciously uh, put together a huge piece of research regarding, regarding, here's his company, DKW Analytics, Data Science Consulting. I don't know if you participated or not, but he put together uh, a video. We put together a video where we uh, solicited from you, the Basement to Other Community, your predictions on what the silver price and gold price will be in one year. He spent a lot of time, a lot of effort. He's an expert, okay? Uh, I mean, listen to this. Uh, Analytics is a consulting firm with expertise in all areas of data science, ranging from traditional statistical analysis to more advanced techniques, techniques, including machine learning and artificial intelligence. So we put together, or he put together, a huge amount of data from you and then applied these data science techniques to come up with a a prediction, I guess we would say, based upon his methods. Now, look, we aren't giving financial advice. Let's say that right off the bat. But he used the wisdom of the crowd and some other methods to come up with what the silver price and gold price Uh, could likely be one year from now. So that'll be Monday during the live stream at 1030. Um, Let me just show you. And he also, I mean, this guy is very sharp and so nice. Such a wonderful, nice guy. First time he called me, first time I talked to him, I was actually at the Great Wolf Lodge in serious back pain. I'll never forget talking to him. Like, I don't want to talk to anybody, whatever. But I talked to this guy. He is He's a basement dweller. He's super smart, right? He actually teaches statistics at Northwestern University, okay? So we're very, very lucky to have him and the work that he put in. And again, that'll be during the Monday at 1030 live stream where we're going to talk about what his data is showing regarding what the gold and silver price could be in one year. It'll be super interesting. But let's dive right in. Guys, we've got a Fed... Uh, Bank, Philadelphia, talking about the gold standard. This is just absolutely crazy. Let's go to that uh, article right now. Uh, Here we go. I've got this all highlighted and ready to go. What does this mean uh, if the Philadelphia Fed is putting out a research paper about the gold standard? At minimum, I haven't heard the Fed talk about the gold standard forever, right? John Exter, Exter's Pyramid. We'll talk more about that later, but that was the last time. What does this mean? I mean, we know there's new attention. It's starting to percolate uh, on the horrific fiscal situation that we face here in the United States. And we've got an article here from the New York Sun, okay? It says, a new study just issued by the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia finds that a gold standard ensures long-term price stability. Uh, Will somebody let Congress know? Okay, next, it says the collapse today in the value of the dollar to a record low in terms of gold, right? Remember, since 1971, the dollar's lost 98% of its value against gold, prompts us to turn a just-issued report from the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. 
It has come out with a study touting gold. Now, when they're talking about gold, we know they're also talking about silver. They aren't talking about going back on the silver standard, which worked really well for the United States for hundreds of years. We actually achieved all this supposed, uh, well, real greatness during a period of time where we had a bimetallic standard. Our silver uh, was part of backing our money. Uh, gold, which is the classical measure of monetary value as a vehicle to achieve stable prices. Wait till you hear what Larry Summers, the 71st Treasury Secretary of the United States, had to say about inflation, because we certainly don't have stable prices right now. It says the key finding of the Fed's paper is that the gold standard, quote, ensures long-term price stability. That's hardly news to those who have long stressed that a gold standard defining the dollar as a fixed weight of gold has historically been the best means to, to hold prices steady. This from a regional bank talking about the, uh, the Philadelphia Federal Reserve Bank that is part of the Federal Reserve and was headed by Ben Bernanke who infamously said, if you look at actual history of the gold standard, it didn't work well. I don't, I, that to me, that's, I never liked Ben Bernack. And to be honest with you, I don't know how you feel about uh, Jeremy Powell, Gomer Powell, whatever you want to call him, the current head of the Federal Reserve. I'm not a big fan of his either. I would argue, would you argue the gold standard when we had silver also in our money? That was the period of time when America achieved greatness. Uh, when I talked with Rob Keats a couple months ago, I asked him about that. He said, I have a whole section in my book about that. Any society, not just the United States, has achieved greatness when they were when they were backing their money with silver and gold. Mr. Bernack's disdain for gold for the gold standard reflects the conventional wisdom in the academic and financial worlds since America abandoned the last vestige of the gold standard in 1971. Let me remind you that President Nixon. You know, when he announced it, he said, we are temporarily taking the United States off the gold standard. That period uh, ushered in the age of the fiat dollar. Well, I need to send a note to these people and let them know. Silver for the 100 likes. Oh, Susie. All right. Let, I have to break in. I just had news from Susie on the walkie talkie. We've got 100 likes. Uh, let me go back. I'm going to we're doing something new, guys. Yeah, things are changing a little bit. We're using the pinger today. I'm going to ping for you a peace dollar. See if you can see that. And I'm not sponsored by the pocket pinger. I just think it's really cool. So I'm going to ring it 10 times for you, basement dwellers, for the 100 thumbs up, right? That's the way we show our, our love for each other. And it's okay to say that we love each other. What the heck? We're going to talk about Easter in a second here, too. I'm wearing this. Susie this morning's like wearing Easter shirt. I'm like, what's an Easter shirt? I don't have any Easter shirts. I don't have shirts with bunnies on them. She said, wear your yellow shirt. So you can thank Susie for this yellow shirt today. 10 dings of the pocket pinger of a 1925 peace dollar. I think that's called resonating. Isn't that, it blows me away. The gong does that too. Okay, let's get back to this article. Then we'll talk about Easter. Uh, ba -ba, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Since the dollar, yeah. So the dollar, okay. The, the, I heard this, I've heard this being said. Have you heard this lately? The dollar's value has plummeted to uh, to less than, at it, and it's record today, $1.00. I mean, it's obvious, but I've never heard it said this way. One dollar is worth one two thousand two hundredth of an ounce of gold, right? Because each ounce of gold costs two thousand two hundred dollars. Uh, then they talk about inflation. We're going to talk more. We got shocking news on that. Under gold, the authors at, excuse me, inflation and deflation are merely temporary phenomena. The Fed working paper corresponds with America's historical experience with the gold standard. Economist Michael Bordeaux, whose work is cited in the scholar's study, has observed how in the heyday of America's gold standard between 1879 and 1913, inflation here was held down to an average of but 0.1% a year. 
That's a little better than the 10%, which is about, I believe, 100 times higher that we had officially a few years back. But that's all a sham because Larry Summers, the 71st Treasury Secretary of the United States of America, pointed out something very interesting that we're going to cover a little later, a performance that puts the feds to shame. Finally, geez, thanks for being with me today, Basement Dwellers, by the way. It's worth noting that the working study Vindicating Gold as a Means to Keep Prices Stable came out of Philadelphia. That's where Washington signed the Coinage Act of 1792, which established silver, silver and gold as America's money. The Philadelphia Federal Reserve study concedes that its findings constitute, quote, preliminary research that is being circulated for discussion purposes. <laughs> well, it worked because we're discussing it. Me and all these super smart, one of a kind, unique basement dwellers who are here in the basement today, hanging out, talking about silver and gold when it comes to a role for gold in America's monetary system. There is much to discuss. I think the Russians might want to discuss that with us as well. Maybe the Chinese, maybe the Brazilians, maybe India, maybe South Africa, maybe Saudi Arabia, maybe Egypt, Ethiopia, uh, United Arab Emirates, and there's one more in there. Iran, I think they want to talk about this as well. So way to go, Philadelphia Fed. Very, very interesting. You know what? Let's go right here. Wait a minute. Is it on there? Yeah, you see it. Uh, so yesterday, do you have that? It's Easter. Happy Easter Bunny. It's the Easter Bunny. That's my front yard. That's our giant 18-foot-tall wooden Easter Bunny. Okay, I exaggerate. He's only six feet tall. But yesterday, I was working all morning. Every year, Susie wants me to haul that thing up from down here in the basement. He sits back behind the front, and she said, you ain't going to put the Easter Bunny up. And you, it was the sigh that you, if you heard a weird noise that went like, oh, like a sigh, that was me because I didn't want to do it. I just didn't want to do it. Okay. As you can see back by his hips, I have to get rebar out, sledgehammer, the whole nine yards. Guys, I don't know if you're anything like me. Sometimes your spouse, your significant other, whoever it is, ask you to do something. And I was like, oh, no. It took me like 10 minutes and I got done and I thought, why do I complain so much about this? And the kids, had ridden their bikes to Panera Bread to get some lunch, and they came home, and my daughter, Evelyn, really touched me because she came in. She said, thank you, Daddy, for putting up the Easter Bunny, because even though she's 12 years old, she still wanted that Easter Bunny. I got a great Easter tip for you, too. If you have little kids, I, I'm, I'll say that one later. We're going to move on to more silver and gold-related stuff, but uh, yeah, there's the old Easter Bunny. Oh, I forgot he's still up. You guys want to see me. Easter shirt. <laughs> Easter shirt. Okay. Um, where was I? All right. We talked about that. We talked about that. Okay. Oh, Extra's Pyramid. Are they looking at Extra's Pyramid? We got to show that real quick. The Philadelphia Fed. Bear with me. Let's get through. There we go. Okay. Is that what the Philadelphia Fed's looking at? At the gold standard? Remember, this came from John Extra, who worked for the New York Federal Reserve and just died a couple decades ago. He spent his entire career espousing the benefits of the silver and gold standard in this extras pyramid. I know it's fun to look at for all of us, right? Remember, base money, bank money, government bonds, corporate bonds, non-monetary commodities, derivatives. And this chart even says cryptocurrencies. That's up for debate. Nonetheless, all that, I, I can say this, everything above silver and gold, and I think those people at the Federal Reserve in Philadelphia know this, Everything above silver and gold is synthetic. If you notice that, man-made, paper money, bank money, I won't go through the whole list. Silver and gold are the only real tangible assets in this graph. And the exciting thing about this, think about this, look at that, okay? Look at derivatives. Look at all the things at the top. They are huge, huge compared to the little bit of actual physical gold and silver in the world. When those things start to slowly, and it's, it probably isn't going to happen all at once, but when the bank money, when the debt, when the derivatives, God forbid, start to implode and a little bit of all that money starts to funnel its way back down to that little bitty a bit of gold and silver, it doesn't take a lot for that to make a massive, massive difference. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be interesting. And yeah, yeah. I also want to say thanks to another basement dweller, Don the Brain. He... 
uh, help set up our website, ronsbasement.com. There's a chat room there. But I want to say something about this guy uh, that I need to share with you. And that is that almost four or five days a week, he sends me the most supportive, nice emails. And I'm going to tell you, that goes a long, long way. I really appreciate that. And he gives me tips on how I can improve, And but just a super nice guy. So thank you, Don the Brain. Thank you, too, for being here today. Thank you to all the moderators who are here today. Susie, this is Susie's house. And again, you can thank her for this supposed, I guess this is an Easter shirt, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, Easter shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, we are doomed. You want to hear some doom, guys? You ready for some doom? We're doomed, and it spells relief for you. I mean, we don't want you don't want bad things to happen, but it spells relief for you as a silver and gold investors. Larry Summers, who was the 71st United States of America Treasury Secretary, told us this is crazy and 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 immensely interesting. And this has been published everywhere, okay, even in Forbes, that inflation in 2022, and I have a graph that is going to blow your mind on this one, but that inflation in 2022 was really more almost like 20%, okay? Here's what Forbes says. Summers, inflation reached 18%. So I exaggerated a little bit. You can round 18 up to 20, right? No big deal. I stand corrected. Forbes says that Summers said that inflation reached 18% in 2022 using the government's previous formula. Amen. Amen. Sorry, I yelled. Amen. Alleluia. I'm going to try to stop talking so loud. I'm working on that. And I'm not going to say okay or um. Quote, quote, this is from Forbes. Numerous commentators, especially those defending President Biden's economic record, have been puzzled over why Americans are sour about the state of the U.S. economy. Unemployment rates have returned to pre-pandemic lows. Yeah, because everybody's got to get two or three or four jobs. I digress. Commentators correctly point out, and the official rate of inflation is declining. Inflation's coming down. You should be happy, right? Yeah, except... Those jobs, all those jobs, right? They don't pay. They don't pay enough to compensate for all the inflation. And we're going to see that here in a second. So why are Americans ignoring the view of many experts, I might add biased experts, that the economy is doing well? Duh. Maybe it's because prices have already gone through the roof, right? Prices shot up crazy. You know that. I know that. Okay. So now, all of a sudden, they're going to say now that prices have shot up 25, 30, 40 percent in many instances, now that they're up there and they're going to say, well, now they're just going up by two or three percent. Well, no joke, right? Because a loaf of bread went from a dollar to a dollar 40. Oh, OK. Well, that really hurt. That hurt Americans. Right. And now. Over the last year, it just went from a dollar forty to a dollar fifty. Well, it still went from a dollar to a dollar fifty in the last three years. Okay, and I, I want to show you this chart. Okay, and it's same thing with housing, fuel, <coughs> cars, uh, internet, <laughs> everything except silver. Now we're going to talk about that as well. But let me pull up this chart, and this this will show you. Hold on here. As I always say, bear with me. Here's the chart. Okay, look at this chart. And this is from Dario Perkins. He put this out on, uh, what's that called? X, okay? Hope this helps. So these are prices. Oh, darn, did I? Uh, okay, these are food prices. So back in 2018, about at about 100, and all those different colors are, oops, shoot. <laughs> There's our friends. Oh, those <laughs> the four stooges. Sorry, I digress. That's food, okay? In different countries. Yes. Okay. Which one? I can't see. This is horrible. Okay. United States is the blue one. So 2018, it starts at about a hundred, right? So let's say the hundred dollars worth of groceries stays steady. 2022. What happens? It goes from around a hundred, whoop, whoop, all the way up in one year to 125. So what cost you $100 on average in 2022 at the beginning, by the end of the year, cost you $125, okay? 
And now they're bragging, this is the bit that economists care about. Oh, well, look, over the last year, we've got inflation under control. Well, that's great, but what about this? Okay, because incomes didn't go up like that. If they did, it's because right here, maybe you went from having a one full-time job to now driving Uber and delivering Taco Bell to drunk college kids on the weekend, right? You get two and three jobs. So that's the problem. We're not buying it. Sorry. You know, uh-oh, I screwed something up. Okay, we're back. <laughs> oh, welcome to Ron's basement. Yep, we do our best. Uh, there's more I wanted to say about food chart. Okay, here. And um, uh, let's talk about, and, and, and is this why people don't trust the Fed? Back to that. Here we go. Oh, that's the Easter bunny. I two, I three. Let's read what Carlos had to say. He's a basement dweller. He put this comment on yesterday's um, yesterday's uh, uh, live stream. He says, "I believe we're an amazing setup now for silver and gold price. Real inflation is at ten percent. Okay, and that's what Larry Summers is saying. And, the, and let me back up to this Larry Summers, Treasury Secretary." saying that if we calculated inflation the same way we did back in the 80s, it really would be close to 20%. A big component of that is financing cost, right? And that's real. Remember yesterday, we had a chart that showed the amount of uh, interest payments that individuals are making. I mean, these things are like unbelievable charts. They're just off the charts. I mean, straight up, okay? So anyway, real inflation is at 10%. Interest rates at 5%. Real loss equals 5%, right? Inflation's negative 10. Yeah, so you're losing 5%. So why just get 5%? Uh, why, why just get 5%? Need much higher return like gold and silver. Thank you, Carlos. Instead of low rates, people will start investing in gold. It's up 5% a month or 60% a year. Gold and silver and all tangible commodities are in an Austrian crack-up boom, right? That's Austrian economics. No one trusts the fiat currencies. Carlos, from now on, when you say fiat, you have to put unicorn fart dust in parentheses. They can't raise interest rates. This is the key. And I agree with Carlos on this 100%. Hold on. I'll be right back. Don't leave me. And I got Susie mooing at me. Moo, moo again for everybody, Susie. Hold on. <laughs> I will ring the cowbell in one second. I, this is a critical point that that us basement dwellers need to understand. They can't. The Fed can't raise interest rates due to high debts, right? Do I need to pull up the debt clock today? We're going to skip that for a day. We have debt, debt, government debt, corporate debt, personal debt, 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 debt. The whole world. It cannot, uh, it cannot uh, tolerate any higher interest rates without banks failing. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow I mean, because that's happening uh, without the government. That they, can't, they really cannot raise rates, okay? But they can't lower rates because no one will purchase the U.S. Treasury debt. The Fed's in a box, okay? The Fed is in a box, box, box. You know what? Let's do it two days in a row. Where is he? Here he is. Hey, guys, remember this? Remember this, right? There's inflation on one side, a recession on the other, like we just talked about. Who do you think's in the box? I'm not supposed to not to open it, but I'll open it. You know who's in that box. Our old friend, Jeremy Powell. And the only thing he can do to solve that problem, see that pink thing in there? That's a unicorn. He can print more unicorn fart dust. That's the naughtiest F word I'll ever use on my channel, fart dust. And that's all it is. That's when you look at the U.S. debt clock and you see $34 trillion and growing and growing in a government that is uh, that the interest, high interest rates, that's adding even more to that debt and a government that is spending way more money that is adding to that debt. It all feeds together. It all feeds on each other. It's a doom loop. Okay. It's a doom loop. And I'm going to tell you why right now. This is serious. This is big, big trouble because debt as a percentage of GDP in this country right now is at 124%. Okay. Our previous peak was during World War II, 119%. But this is where it gets absolutely, totally frightening and scary. 
since the 1800s, pretty much any country that ever went more than 130% debt to GDP went belly up. I think there were like 50 com countries, okay, since the 1800s that have had their debt to GDP ratio exceed 130%. And pretty much every single one of them except one, and I think that was England, and I think it had something to do with gold and letting gold fly, basically. England was the only country that was able to escape it, and it had massive, as I understand it, price consequences for gold. That's the situation that we're in right now, and it's a very, very con conducive... Thank you, Daniel, for the super chat. Thank you, Susie, for the reminder. Um, it's a very, very dangerous situation. Let me ring the cowbell here because we got, right, 200 thumbs up. Right? And that's what we do, basement dwellers. And one more for Jake. One more for our friend Jake from Jake's Custom Parts. And, hey, I've been forgetting the... Oh, too much stuff. I need a bigger table. Um, uh, too much stuff going on here. Oh, uh-oh. Hopefully you guys can still see me and hear me. I got a little clip, a little blip. Okay, anyway, well, if you can still see me and hear me, thank you to the, those that moderate. Please, everybody here, we've got 500, almost 600 people. Type eight for those that help moderate. They help take uh, make that that make the channel great. And I, I want to apologize to you. I owe you an apology. This is a one-man band. Susie helps me out with the old uh, walkie-talkie here, but we will have technical difficulties. We will have trouble down here in the basement. So, hey, if you want an, if you have kids or you know somebody who has kids, listen up because I've got the absolute. And make sure if you've got kids that are, let's say, under eight years old, they are not listening right now because I've got the best idea for you, something you can do for Easter that you'll always remember and your kids will always remember. And that's what life's all about. You're only going to need two things, Eisenhower. So get out your pen and paper and write these down. You're going to need a jelly bean, okay, or jelly beans, okay. And you're going to need, go to the Walgreens, go to the dollar store, whatever, and buy some big suckers, okay. That's it. That's all you need. And this is what you do. You take your little four or five-year-old niece or nephew, maybe you have grandkids, maybe you have kids, and you go outside and you say, we're going to plant, this is, you do this on Saturday. So that would be today. We're going to plant magic jelly beans. So, and you got to have a ruler. I'm sorry, you need a third thing, a ruler. Okay. So you get, and made, you know, take out a, take one of your kitchen knives. Just don't let your wife or significant other know that you're using it. And you want to dig a little hole, but it has to be exactly three quarters of an inch deep. Okay. And you dig your little hole with your wife's kitchen knife that you're not telling her you're using. Susie, you're not hearing this right now. You take one of the jelly beans and you give it to your little niece or nephew and you say, put that in the hole. So they stick it down in the hole and you explain to them that that's a magic jelly bean and it only works on Easter. Okay. And then later that night, you put the little kids to sleep. The earlier, the better, because then you get a break. Okay. And when they're sleeping, you go outside, you take that jelly bean out. If you decide to wash it off and eat it, that's on you. And you take that sucker and you stick it in the hole. And the next morning, that little kid wakes up and goes out to check on their magic jelly bean. And they see that it grew into a sucker. I I, I didn't make that up. I'm not going to take credit for that. I saw that on one of the parent websites. Before I did Ron's Basement, I was like, Mr. Dad, when my daughters were real little, I was always, but that is the funnest thing to do. Seriously, give it a try. You won't be uh, disappointed. Let's get back to silver and gold, okay? All right, guys. Uh, so yeah, we're in the situation right now. Okay, remember, any country that's gone over 130% debt to GDP has gone broke, except for England, I think it was, and, and they did something with gold, and gold like went astronomically high during that period. Right now, we are at 124%. Let me ask you a question. Do you think, basement dwellers, do you think that suddenly our government's going to get spending under control? No, nobody's talking about it. I mean, we're talking about going bust. Seriously. Who was I talking to? I was talking to one of, one of you guys last night on the phone. And I was like, it's like since 1971, the United States has like been on a credit card binge, right? Yeah, uh, 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 just spending recklessly, 
like a college kid on a on a drunken spring break trip, okay? And that doesn't last forever, right? Eventually, American Express and Visa and J.P. Morgan, right? They're going to say, hey, you know what? You're cut off. And is that what is happening? Because we've been borrowing all that money from, right, the BRICS countries. They're saying no mas, no more, okay? This is real. These, these numbers are real. This isn't just some crazy guy in his basement with a wooden barrel in St. Louis saying this. These are people on now mainstream media that are saying, hey, this is real. Um, who is the guy? I got something else big I need to tell you about this. Uh, uh, it's a doom loop. This is real. OK, just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Right. We're all victims to recency bias or normalcy bias. I might say, you know, I'm not giving financial advice, but you might want to consider converting some of uh, where is it? Hold on. I'll be right back. I'm not leaving you. So I'm still here. This last time I'll do this, show you one of these. This this you might want to convert some of this into here. This. Right. That's a that's a, uh, a peace dollar. OK, you might. Oh, look how shiny it is. It's only 100 years old. It still has all that value that it had 100 years ago. Uh, uh, oh, hey, wait a minute. Wait, let's do an experiment. Uh, I have this thing in this hand and this in this hand. They're both called dollars. Which one do I want? Ding, 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 ding. Right. That's the one we want. We're not stupid. <laughs> Thank you, Metal Seer. Thank you. Ronald Reagan was big on jelly beans. Do the magic jelly bean thing. I'm telling you, the little kids think it's cool. You can plant like five of them and then line, you know, five, like, like the bean sprouts overnight and turns into a sucker. Okay, no more Easter talk. I promise, okay? Um, uh, uh, hold on. Page two. You want to have a little break? Let's all have a sip of coffee. I got I to gotta have a sip of coffee. I'll be right. I'm not leaving you. This is my uh, state of Missouri coffee mug. Susie got me that for Christmas one year. Kind of looks like the Federal Reserve. This is my Federal Reserve coffee mug. I'm a big fan of the Fed. I even have Fed coffee mugs. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, we've invited Jeremy Powell, you know, Ben Bernack. And then what's that lady's name? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I'll be right back. Today. We will cordially invite, look, this is a pretty box. Do not feed, do not feed magic mushrooms when in China. We could invite her to come too, right? I mean, do these people, I've got it over there. I've got a calculator. I'd be happy to show them how it works. We'd be happy. Let's do this. Let's do this real quick. Okay. Hold on here. Yeah, and thank you, Carlos. Right. They can't raise rates because the interest costs are too high. The debts will implode. They can't lower rates because nobody wants it. Well, all that's going to happen, you know, Jerome and uh, 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 Janet, they're going to print money. They're going to further dilute the dollar. Okay. And that will add even more debt. It's, it's guys, it's going to be absolutely crazy. What was I going to show you? Not extras pyramid. Not that. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, here, let's just look at this real quick. Confidence in the Fed near an all-time low. This was as of 2023, but nonetheless, confidence in the chair of the Federal Reserve. So um, goes back to, goes to 2020. Alan Greenspan from 87 to 06. Woo, look, he was at 74, okay? This is the last 20 years. 74, and there was a question. Here it is. Percent of correspond, or I'm sorry, percent of respondents with a quote great deal or quote fair amount, a fair amount of trust in the chair of the Federal Reserve. Then we had Ben Bernack. That guy, this guy at least was a little crazy and funny. That guy just bugged me. I'm sorry. Okay, do 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 down. Okay. Then you had Janet Yellen. Okay. Ah, she kind of hung in there. Then Jeremy Powell. Right. We've had him. He got as high as sixty percent. Where is he now? Actually, this was as of 2023. I bet it's even lower, 36%. Was there another slide? Anyway, hold on. I'm, I'm screwing up. I told you, right? Welcome to uh, 
add to stage. Here we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. I know what we want to look at. Well, it's just not going to work. Do we Do we really need to look at the debt clock? I guess we will. We do it almost every day. I lied. Said we weren't going to do it. U.S. debt clock. Here it comes. Yeah, okay. We're up. Now. It's like it, it seems to be running about $10 billion a day. And I think that that doesn't that the math work on that, that it's about then one trillion every 100 days. I think it does, right? What's 100 times 10? Yeah, it's a trillion. So we're get, we're adding just $10 billion a day, guys. That yeah, it's, it's all going to work out, though. They're going to figure out some way. No, they're going to have to print money to finance this. And that printed money, right, is going to either is going to dilute the value of the U.S. dollar and going to be uh, crazy, crazy times for the silver and gold price. OK, it's all fiat funny money system. We know that uh, here. Let's go to this really quick, real quick. We talked about it yesterday, but I want to read this paragraph to you one more time. The, the, the uh, con Congressional Budget Office, okay, that's a part of our government, warns, the director warns, dealt, met down, dealt debt market meltdown with the U.S. debt on unprecedented trajectory. Let's, this is very quick. Last time, okay. Uh, the director of the Congressional Budget Office, Philip Swagel, issued a stark warning that the United States could suffer a similar market crisis as seen in the United Kingdom 18 months ago during former Prime Minister Liz Truss's brief stint leading Britain, which briefly sent yields soaring. Okay, the what are they called over there? I forget that they have a goofy name for their bonds. I forget what they're called. Not bones or I don't know, I think it's German. I don't know. Anyway, sparked a run on the pound, led to immediate restart of QE by the Bank of England and a bailout of various pension funds, not to mention the almost instant resignation of trust citing the nation's unprecedented fiscal trajectory. Welcome to America 2024. Unprecedented fiscal trajectory. It doesn't end well, guys. I don't want to be the uh, uh, Johnny, what's the guy? The sky's falling. Johnny Little running around town. We don't want to, but it doesn't end well. We are in, We the Fed is boxed in a corner, like I showed you earlier painted into a corner. The only thing they're going to be able to do, right, is 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 dilute it all away. They're not going to let it crash. And if they let it either way, either they let it all crash or they dilute the dollar away. I got news for you. Either way, if you're holding silver or gold, what do you think is going to happen? Right? Yeah, you're going to be protected. Just my opinion. Hey, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I need to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The channel sponsor, Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, online bullion dealer. If you're looking to buy some silver, gold, or platinum, right? I never tell you what to do, but I would recommend. Okay, I'm going to ring the gong in a second. Check out Pimbex, okay? I've gotten to know the brothers that own the company. Um, I, I don't know how to say this, but I'll just say it. Like, um, I feel really honored to have gotten to know them, and I mean that, and to have them sponsor Ron's Basement. They've been very supportive of me on many levels, um, and they're just good, honest, like, great people. I'll, I'll leave it at that, okay? And that, I think, is reflected in the service and prices that, that they provide to the metal stacking community. Find out for yourself, okay? I'm, like I said, I'll never tell you what to do, but check out Pimbex. I think you'll think what I think if that makes sense, Pimbex is best and you will get more metal for your money. Let's ring the gong, guys. We have 300 thumbs up and we're not done, okay? We're not done. Hold on one sec. There's more. Shocking, shocking, more shock. I'm going to shock you. This is for you for being here. We got 300 thumbs up. Let's ring the gong. I think it's safe to say that, Ron, I don't know about you, but the way that resonates is crazy. Now, I work at a music school at night, and I was telling um, this really cool young violin teacher, he actually has a PhD in philosophy, he's very smart anyway, about the gong, and he's like, you need to dip it in water. Supposedly, it does something crazy. So one of these days, I will dip the gong in water when it's ringing. He, um, 
Uh, I don't know. Where was I? If I done it, everything we've done it almost all, but we got even more shocking information. It's Easter Saturday. We got to be shocked a little more. What do you say, basement dwellers? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Because don't forget, don't forget. This is critical. Hold on here. Oh, darn it. Did I forget to pull that up? I think I did. Uh, well, anyway, I can verbally, I remember. This is coming from my brain, so consider the source. Don't forget, I'll tell you what they're going to do. They're going to liquidate everything. Silver and gold are going to, are going to the, the, the value, the real value, not the nominal value, the real value of silver, the real value of gold will be recognized, will be realized. Because you know what they're going to do? They're going to introduce CBDCs. Everybody stop talking about CBDCs. We're starting to bring it up a little more, right? Basement dwellers, that's when you got to be careful. When nobody's talking about, that's when they surprise you, right? They're going to they're gonna try to fix this situation with CBDCs. And what proof? Scary. I mean, absolutely scary proof do we have. I'm going to share that with you after I take a sip of water. Thank you for all the thumbs up. I'll tell you the proof, right? Reuters put out a report this week. This should be setting alarms off in the world of freedom-loving Americans, but they don't care. You know why? And I'm watching it a little bit, too. They're too obsessed with basketball, the Sweet 16, right? Guys, Reuters told us this week, the SWIFT system, that's the big Western banking system. That's how all the money, all the dollars get moved around not just the United States, but the world. It's the worldwide dollar transfer system. And you can transfer other currencies as well. But for all intensive purposes, it's the worldwide dollar transfer. The SWIFT system announced that within the next 12 to 24 months, they intend to be basically completely ready to transact with CBDCs. Let that sink in. It's coming. It's coming. And then it's not, they don't even have to print money. This is going to go bye-bye, right? It's going to go bye-bye eventually anyway. They don't even have to print money. They can, they can just, they'll, they'll electron, it'll all be electronic. It'll all be, there's all this fear, right? Right? Like, you know, you'll be limited on what you can buy at the store. You'll be limited on where you can travel, blah, blah. blah. I don't know. I don't want to be a, um, a, a, a conspiracy nut or not nut, a conspiracy that wasn't the right word, a conspiracy, um, somebody who's promoting that, but that possibility, we have to be aware that that could happen. That's happened in China. That's happened. You hear all this, what, I don't know. The conspiracy theorist. Conspiracy theorist. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. Maybe I'll turn the walkie-talkie off in a few moments. Anyway, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but there are some people out there who are very afraid of the level of surveillance and control that can be facilitated by a central bank digital currency, okay? Can they stop you from stacking silver and gold? Now, we've got certain states in the United States of America fighting back bravely, right? We got people like Pat Holland. Where the heck's Pat Holland been? We need to have Pat Holland back on the channel, the Missouri Freedom Initiative. We got people like Daniel Diaz, okay, with uh, Citizens for Sound Money. J.P. Cortez, right? People that are working to further legislation in this country. And it's, I got news for you. It's happening, right? They're defending what your founding fathers put in the Constitution, that silver and gold are real money. And some of this legislation also includes some of it anti-CBDC, or there are some states that are, that are drafting anti-CBDC type legislation. The individual states, and from what I understand, that's why the Constitution was set up that way, is are, are working, right? Do you live in a state? I think there's like in total around 25 states that have some level of either legal tender legislation that's already been passed or are pending or working on legislation, working it through the system to get it passed. So that's the, st that's the story. Is that how they're going to try to fix everything? Is that what they're going to do? right? CBDC. They can print money. Oh, we need, you know, I mean, are we living in a fantasy world? This, huh? This is from big, no, this is from Jake. This, hold on. 
I'm going to get that on the, it's so beautiful. It's not fantasy world, right? A one ounce American silver eagle, right? This is fantasy land. Let me show you. Hold on. Hey, I got to tell you guys something really cool. You need to get yourself a wood cedar barrel. <laughs> I'll tell the story one more time, but we were in Branson, Missouri. Look at that thing. It is really beautiful. And uh, at this like craft mall backwoods thing. And there was this little shop in the back, a woodworker shop. And this nice couple, they're like, we just opened. We'll give you 20% off anything in the store because we really need money. And they had all these wood things. And I saw this. I don't, does this, has that ever happened to you where you just gravitate towards something? Because they had like slingshots, everything made out of wood, everything you want. I need to get the, I don't think they have a website. I'm sure they don't. This is like backwoods, but really cool. And I said, what about that barrel? You know, I think it was $25 and uh, it's a bank. See? And, and uh, anyway, she was like, yeah, she said, there's a 95 year old man. She said, we actually don't make those ourselves. There's a 95 year old man that makes those barrels. And I'm telling you, it is the coolest thing ever. And that's not why I pulled it out. Oh, I pulled it out. Well, because I'm going to fill this with constitutional silver. Last time I'll show you, but see like, the full size, well, that's constitutional silver, but full size coins won't fit in there, unfortunately. Um, this, okay, this is funny money. See what this says? I want you to, I want you to look at what this says. I stole that from my daughter's Monopoly game. This is funny money. This, I mean, is there really much difference with this and this? I, I beg the question, right? I beg you. Tell me, what's the difference between this and this, right? I mean, obviously, there's some difference, right? Right, but there's uh, uh, there, there's there's much more difference between this, right? This 1925, I think it is, um, peace dollar, and this, right? These two are much more closely related. Okay, that than this. This is far, far away. This is real money. It's interesting, and you know, it's really sad because Americans. Are you part of the? I don't. You, well, you know, you're not part of this. But most Americans, the level of financial education in this country, uh, it's astounding. People don't know anything. My kids are in sixth grade. They don't learn anything about money. They don't learn if you. Uh, are a standard American, right? And, and you and you don't have parents that are money savvy. And uh, the public school system, the private school system, for that matter, too, the college isn't going to teach you. Okay, you got to learn it on your own. Unless you study accounting, I studied accounting, so I understand how money works. But I don't expect that everybody else, like I can't read a sheet of music, but I can tell you all about balance sheets, cash flow statements, all that stuff, and I'll bore you to death. And I'm not going to do that, right? But your average American, if they're relying upon their parents or the uh, mainstream system that we go through, doesn't have they're, they're going to be taught go in debt, <coughs> go to college, go in debt, buy a car, go in debt, buy an apartment, go in debt, go on a vacation, go in debt, right? No, no. In this, this is the opposite. Okay, I've gone on too long. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Look, it's very interesting what's going on right now. We have the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia talking about the benefits of the gold standard. Let that sink in. We've got Larry Summers, the 71st Treasury Secretary of the United States of America, telling us that inflation in 2022 was really more like 20%. Okay, we've got big, big trouble on the horizon for this country as we sit right now with a debt to GDP ratio of 124%, knowing that basically no country has ever recovered when they've gone past 130%. And the government themselves, they're projecting, right, that we're going to be at like 150% debt to GDP, I don't know, within the next five to 10 years. I don't have that chart, but there's other charts out there that show that. And guys, Guys, that's doom. That's gloom. That's math. That's calcul. That's a calculator. That's not, you know, that's re. To get to 400 likes. Susie wants us to get to 400 likes. All right, I'm going to stick around. Susie, how many likes do we have? Guys, if you haven't given this a thumbs up, please do. When we get to 400 likes, we don't do this often, but that guy I told you about earlier, Don the Brain, the nicest guy in the world. 
Okay. He really is a nice guy. He sent this. Look at this. The old train whistle. Okay. Yeah, I know. A special treat. Please don't unlike my video. Susie, if you could uh, give me an update on how many likes we have, huh? That would be awesome. Okay. <coughs> hey, there's Neil. Hello, Annie. Hello, Hal. Um, so, so that's the situation that we're dealing with. Oh, guys, come on. We need eight more likes. Please press the thumbs up, okay? And when Susie hits me up on the walkie-talkie, uh, for those of you that don't know, that's my lovely wife, Susie. I do post very beautiful woman, very kind, very understanding, very tolerant, which explains why she's been married to me for 19 years and 168 days. I, I've been counting the days, and I'm very grateful for that. Everybody say hi, Susie. Susie says hi. Susie, say hi. You're waving at everybody. Hello. Susie, say hi. Hi there. <laughs> okay. Oh, brother. Oh, I need to say thank you to our channel sponsor. Whoa, 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 whoa. First Mining Gold. If you want to learn more about First Mining Gold, go to their website. Firstmininggold.com. Okay. Two multi million ounce gold development projects in Canada and our friends at Fortuna Silver, Jorge Ganoza, right? One of my favorite mining company CEOs over the almost last 20 years has consistently and conservatively grown the company. You can learn more about them at fortunasilver.com. Um, let's see here. I'm going to say hi to a few people. Jake from Jake's Custom Parts. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> the cat says, I love tuna. Annie Oakley, Metal Seer. And thank you. We got another super chat. Um, so uh, I'm going to, Susie, are we at 400 thumbs up? Hello, hello. Wow. Fake money. Hold on. Oh, yeah. oh we are. Okay, guys, I'm going to blow the train whistle. Okay. Yeah, four, four, four. <laughs> All right, four blows of the train whistle. Thank you for being here, okay? Everybody have a great Easter. I may try to hop on tomorrow for a real quick live stream just to say hello. Be nice to yourself today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the super chats, the super thanks. The donations do go a long, long way, and they are very much appreciated, okay? Treat yourself well. Do your best to treat other well, others well.